Hammurabi, the sixth king of ancient Babylon, has become an icon of establishing ethical standards and justice in his society through the issuance of his famous Code of Laws. The Code of Hammurabi is not just a legal document, but also a symbol of the power and influence of this king over the Babylonian Empire. Its presence has contributed to creating a stable and prosperous civilization for Babylon, and its influence has spread far and wide in the ancient world. To this day, the Code of Hammurabi remains a significant subject of study for scholars, aiming to gain a better understanding of civilization and law in ancient times. In 1901, a French archaeological expedition discovered the Code of Hammurabi engraved on a 2.44-meter-high basalt stele located in the square of the city of Susa, now part of present-day Iran. This code was created by Hammurabi, the sixth king of Babylon. Today, it is preserved at the Louvre Museum in France. The upper part of the stele features the image of the Babylonian deity Shamash, with King Hammurabi standing before the deity. His right hand is raised, showing reverence or readiness to receive the scepter and the ring, symbols of the power bestowed by the deity. According to researchers, the Code of Hammurabi emerged during a period of economic prosperity in the Mesopotamian region, particularly in agriculture and trade. These economic activities created a need for a legal code to resolve disputes in civil relations. From this need, the Code of Hammurabi was built upon the oral traditions of the Sumerians and Amorites. The code is written in ancient Babylonian cuneiform script and consists of three main parts, the prologue, the laws, and the epilogue, totaling 282 articles. However, historians can only decipher 247 laws as 35 were destroyed by invasions. The prologue of the code declares that the gods entrusted the land to the king to make it prosperous and the people well-fed. The epilogue with threatens punishment for those who do not respect or obey the law. The combination of divine human rights and legal aspects made the code more sacred for the purpose of governing the people. Its scope is extensive, applying to primarily social relations in four main areas, civil, criminal, family, and procedural law. Although the code is not divided into specific branches of law, its structure is divided into groups of statutes with various provisions and contents. The content of the code reflects an overview of economic, political, cultural, and social activities, as well as all aspects related to the material and spiritual life of the Babylonian people. In ancient times, as the commodity economy of ancient Mesopotamia flourished, Land became a valuable asset, and to protect justice in society, legal texts emerged. Modern archaeologists have uncovered the secrets of these texts, among which stands out the work of Emperor Hammurabi, a skilled leader who laid the foundation for a powerful central government of a nation. Babylon, the magnificent and orderly historical city in Mesopotamian civilization, holds a precious treasure trove of law the Code of Hammurabi. It is divided into three main parts, encompassing all regulations in every sphere of society. In contrast to the Code of Manu, which focuses solely on religious doctrines and regulations, the Code of Hammurabi becomes a multidimensional portrait of life, consisting of 12 chapters, 282 laws. It is not just a collection of laws, but also the face of the ruling class's power compiled and written under the supervision of Babylonian theologians. The Code of Hammurabi, symbolizing progress and politicization in ancient civilization, does not limit itself to one field, but encompasses all aspects of society, from legal regulations to citizens' rights, from punishments for criminals to regulations on marriage and family. This code reflects concern for every aspect of life. The content of the code is not just a collection of statutes, but also reflects the inheritance and development from previous legal texts of the Sumerians. With 282 specific articles, it covers a range of issues, from procedural matters to citizens' rights and obligations, from penalties for crimes to regulations on slave trade. 
During the drafting process, the provisions were organized in a systematic and logical manner, emphasizing the classification of social relations and regulating them clearly. Although not divided into specific branches of law as in modern times, this arrangement helped create a comprehensive and clear legal system. The Code of Hammurabi demonstrates a rather sophisticated legislative technique. A notable aspect of the drafting process of the Code of Hammurabi is the absence of the predominance of criminal law over all legal relations. This highlights the difference between the legal system of the Hammurabi dynasty and the laws of the Western Zhou period. While Western Zhou law focused on applying penalties, the Code of Hammurabi emphasized regulating every aspect of society. The Code of Hammurabi also reflects inheritance from previous legal systems while strongly asserting the power of law. This combination of tradition and state power is most evident in the regulations concerning marriage and family. The Code pays particular attention to family relationships, such as the parent-child relationship. A clear example of this is the provision in Article 168 of the Code, where the resolution of conflicts between parents and children is addressed. If a father desires to disinherit his son, he shall say to the judge, I disinherit my son. The judge shall inquire into the matter. If the son is not guilty of gross misconduct against his father, then the father shall not disinherit him. The Code of Hammurabi is also notable for the development of civil law, regulating relationships between individuals in detail and clarity. In many provisions, there is an emphasis on building sustainable and just labor relationships. This reflects progress and innovation in constructing a legal system suitable for the practical needs of ancient society. The Code of Hammurabi is not only a historical legal document, but also a valuable resource that helps us gain a deeper understanding of ancient Babylonian society. It contains many progressive provisions with enduring value over time. In addition to protecting the interests of the ruling class, the Code also emphasizes the protection of the vulnerable reflecting a progressive spirit in the field of law. For example, the code prohibits the practice of seizing the body of a debtor to serve as a slave in another's house, limits the duration of servitude to three years, and safeguards the rights of minors and foster children. Moreover, the code is particularly progressive in its application of punishments. It proposes a system of criminal sanctions to address various offenses, ranging from minor to severe. However, the imposition of severe penalties is restricted for certain individuals. The Code of Hammurabi is particularly advanced and detailed in its provisions regarding civil matters, especially in regards to contractual relationships, a crucial aspect of ancient Babylonian society. The regulations are not only progressive in content, but also meticulous in legislative technique. In regulating sales contracts, the law clearly stipulates three necessary conditions. The seller must be the true owner of the property, the property must have utility value, and the contract must have a witness. Failure to meet any of these conditions renders the contract void. Violators will be severely punished, even potentially paying with their lives. This provision demonstrates progressiveness and caution in protecting the rights of buyers and preventing fraud in transactions. In regulating loan contracts, the law also clearly stipulates interest rates and collateral, depending on the type of contract. However, it can be observed that the law primarily protects the interests of the ruling class, while poor laborers are often disadvantaged in this legal system. This reflects discrimination between social classes and is a limitation of the Hammurabi Code as well as many other legal systems worldwide where class division still exists. Marriage and Family Provisions The Code of Hammurabi not only focuses on imposing strict penalties, but also on regulating family matters, especially regarding marriage and family, an integral part of ancient Babylonian society. These provisions are very detailed and humane, reflecting certain gender roles and social norms. The law clearly stipulates marriage procedures including the need for documentation to protect the rights of both parties in case of divorce. This is a progressive step compared to some other ancient East Asian countries where marriage often involves merely buying a wife without protection for women. 
Another humane provision is the prohibition of husbands abandoning wives with leprosy, with measures to protect the wife's rights in such cases. However, the law also reflects a dual standard regarding gender and social status. Women typically have lower status, and husbands are often seen as the heads of the household. The husband's rights are usually more dominant, and if there are no children, he has the right to divorce or sell his wife. Penalties for adultery are also unjust between men and women, indicating inequality between the genders in ancient Babylonian society. On inheritance provisions, according to Aristotle's perspective, inheritance rights involve receiving property from the deceased according to the legal order. This includes inheriting estates and fulfilling the property obligations of the deceased. The Hammurabi Code distinguishes between two main forms of inheritance, inheritance by law and inheritance by will, with inheritance by will becoming more common over time. Inheritance by will entails carrying out the subjective will of the property owner, deciding how to use the property after death. The law limits the freedom of the testator, particularly stipulating that a father cannot disinherit his son if the son commits a minor offense for the first time and it is not serious. Inheritance by law occurs in cases where there is no will or the will is invalid. In such cases, the deceased's property is divided according to the law, transferred to those entitled to inherit according to legal provisions. Initially, property tends to concentrate within the lineage, but later, it shifts to the family with inheritance rights and becomes the family's common property. Unlike some other ancient East Asian countries where only sons could inherit, Lung Ha law does not differentiate between sons and daughters, granting them equal inheritance rights. This can be seen as a minor gender equality in Mesopotamia. Regarding criminal matters, in ancient Mesopotamian society, the realm of criminal law was where the inequality and class distinctions were most evident. Hammurabi's code established principles to protect the rights and status of husbands and fathers within the family, while also reflecting the vulnerability and susceptibility of women in this society. The laws also safeguard social relations, such as property rights, the institution of slavery, and human dignity. Hammurabi recognized three social classes, the elite, free citizens without land, and slaves. Penalties were stipulated rigorously, especially for offenses against individuals of higher status. Gender equality was demonstrated by both sons and daughters having inheritance rights. However, the code still upheld principles of equal retaliation, allowing for punishment of those unrelated to the perpetrator. Nevertheless, it distinguished between unintentional and intentional crimes, creating a more equitable judicial system a progressive aspect in the field of criminal law was the strong differentiation between unintentional and intentional offenses. For example, the law stipulated that in cases where a fight resulted in someone's death, if the perpetrator could prove that the death was unintentional, they would not face capital punishment, but rather a lesser penalty. This was one of the more objective provisions in criminal proceedings, making the legal system more equitable. In ancient society, litigation was a crucial process for resolving disputes. Hammurabi's code established numerous provisions regarding legal procedures such as arrest, detention, and trial, while also laying down fundamental principles like public trials and the importance of evidence. A notable feature is the accountability of judges, who were required to take responsibility and compensate if errors were found in their rulings. This encouraged objectivity and caution from judges, ensuring fairness in the trial process. However, the code also had certain limitations, such as a lack of high abstraction and lengthy provisions detailing specific behaviors. Many clauses were related to criminal law and paid little attention to civil relations. It is also worth noting that most criminals were subject to capital punishment, leaving little room for rehabilitation and redemption. Despite its primitive nature, Hammurabi's code had a significant influence on the legal systems of other ancient civilizations, particularly ancient Hebrew law. While some remnants of ancient legal customs persisted, Hammurabi's code introduced many new elements, especially regarding the law of slave ownership. The significance of Hammurabi's law 
lies in how its introduction of new elements in the law of slave ownership to a certain extent propelled the continued dismantling of vestiges of feudalism and strengthened the entire system of slave ownership in general. While the Hammurabi Code has aided posterity in understanding intricate details unique to ancient Babylonian life, questions persist regarding how the legal system operated in that society. Although the Hammurabi Stele is regarded as a list of legal provisions, some argue that it merely represents modifications and additions to pre-existing rules. Others suggest that the inscriptions on the stele are derived from practical cases, and some even contend that the Hammurabi Code is not a valid legal document, but rather part of the glorification of Hammurabi as a great emperor. Despite these debates, the Hammurabi Code remains one of the oldest legal documents found in the world today. It represents one of the most significant achievements in the history of ancient civilization. The value of this legal code continues to be studied, explored, and inherited to this day, especially in the research of global law and Vietnamese law. Despite nearly 4,000 years having passed since its inception, it still encapsulates cultural and progressive values from which contemporary legal systems can learn and evolve. This contributes significantly to the radiant value of ancient Mesopotamian civilization. What are your thoughts on the Hammurabi Code? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to continue the journey of exploring the ancient world with us. Thank you for your attention and engagement.